carrying around this jewel, um, and he's going all over the world looking for it. Um, blah, blah, blah. If we have made such a mistake in the smallest step, we have to make uh, stumbling or mistakes uh, just at the moment. Uh, we have fortunately got the important situation of having a human body already. Therefore, how is it possible for us to spend a bit of time without doing uh, anything uselessly at all? I think Hishijima has, has not quite gotten the uh, idea of double negatives. Um, so he kind of he kind of uses double negatives, which happen in, in Japanese and actually in Chinese as well, to emphasize the negativity of something without realizing that that he's you know changed the meaning entirely. So you you often find that if you read his writing. So deal do that. Um, meaning just basically uh, when uh, don't waste time. This is a big a big point in uh, Buddhist practice. Um, a phrase you, you hear often is the idea of killing time, and I hate that phrase because I don't want to kill any time because I don't have time to kill. <laughs> you know, I, I've only got a short human life, and, and I don't want to waste any of it. That's my attitude anyway. Uh, fortunately, we have maintained the human body and mind, which are the very important substance for pursuing Buddhist truth. So, how is it possible uh, uh, to enjoy the slightest instant joy like a spark or a flint? Um, uh, at the moment, in vain at all. Therefore, the physical substance is transient as dew on a leaf, and the situation of human life seems to be similar to a flash of lightning. It suddenly it disappears and has been lost at once. Which, which I just uh, Therefore, I would like to ask those higher people who are practicing and pursuing the truth that being accustomed to the miscellaneous images of imitative dragons do not fear to meet the real dragon. Actually, that's kind of a weird translation. Um, it refers to a story. Actually, uh, Nishijima Sensei's first book was called, or first book in English was called, uh, "To Meet the Real Dragon," which refers to a story, an old, old story in which a guy is um, a collector of dragon figures, as as I am a collector of Godzilla figures. Uh, and uh, he enjoys collecting these figures and. Uh, and he's kind of famous for this, and a real dragon uh, hears about how much this guy likes dragons, so he decides to pay the guy a visit, because he, he likes real dragons. Uh, so the real dragon comes and pays the guy a visit, and he's scared to death. He's, oh my god, a dragon. Um, it's a metaphor for um, the way a lot of people um, deal with Buddhism. Uh, which is kind of a, uh, I mean, it's nice, it's a good thing that you're all here and, and coming and doing the practice, which, which I think is a, is, a, is a tremendous thing, because there's a lot of people who talk Buddhism uh, and never do it. Um, and all that talk is really kind of useless and, and, and probably worse than useless. It's kind of damaging. Um, but you hear a lot of it, uh, a, a lot of what, what goes on in, in, in intellectual circles about Buddhism and what's, what's spoken about. It's spoken about by people who've never, never actually um, done the practice. Uh, and it's doing the practice that's actually the most important thing, the most crucial thing. It's like, it's like you know, if you had people theorizing about baseball who'd never played baseball, I mean, do they do they really understand baseball at all? They might they might know all the rules and, and might know all the history, uh, but if you can't play baseball, I don't know how uh, valuable your opinion on, on baseball can be. Uh, please make your efforts in the practice of zazen, which indicates the truth directly. Revere a personality who has transcended learning and having any kind of intention. It was transcending learning and, and transcended having any kind of intention. Uh, and become perfectly identified with the truth of the Buddhas, and received the balanced state of the patriarchs authentically. If you practice what is ineffable, uh, which is Zazen, it is impossible for you to avoid becoming the ineff ineffable. Um, this is also another kind of optimistic uh, view that you often find in, in Buddhist uh, literature, which is that uh, if, you, if you practice, you'll succeed. Um, success is a kind of loaded word. If you keep on doing the practice, the practice will will um, will bear some kind of fruit in your life. Um, it's just unavoidable. 
Um, there's no way to really get it wrong, or, and it's never a waste of time. Uh, the grand warehouse of jewels will become open naturally, and you have got the perfect freedom to get the jewels and utilize them without any hindrance. So that's the end of, end of Fukan's sense of that. Um, so I guess I should open it up to questions, because uh, we're going to talk about the meal services pretty soon after this, too. So. Any questions? It's all perfectly <laughs> <laughs> Um, You said at the beginning that, that human capacity for intellect is basically what separates us from all the other animals. Yeah, that's just my theory. Which I'll agree with that yeah. being, you know, evolution, let's say. But um, if that's the case, and then maybe it's a choice of words between thought and intellect, um, what is so bad about thinking all the time that we have to engage in an action in, in order to get away from thinking? And the reason I say it is because I agree that maybe not all thought is valuable or useful. We spend a lot of time fretting about things and people kill each other because they call God by a different name or whatever. There's, there's all that stuff. But if you turn around and say, the reason we have such a capacity for intellect um, is because we think a lot. Mm. So it's, first of all, it's, it's, it's causational. And the reason we can come up with a brilliant thought every now and then that can maybe move society forward or Einstein or whatever is because we can think about a million other things which a million other people consider totally ridiculous. You know, Galileo was basically mm -hmm. abused horrendously for actually understanding the universe and being able to describe it. You know, so they everybody always says, um, you know, genius is always considered foolishness until somebody actually realizes he was right. So, how is it that we can justify cutting away the unnecessary thought? How do you define that? I mean, mm. what is, you know, is, is intuition the thing that really separates us from animals? Because, I mean, a lion intuitively knows how to kill its prey. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you get rid of all that, then we go back to some anim animalistic state where we're, you know, hunter-gatherers, we spend all of our time trying to get food and stay warm. I don't think, I don't, uh, I would never say that, that all thought is useless, because obviously there's a, there's a lot of useful things you can do with thought. You know, we couldn't we, we couldn't possibly have set up this retreat, for example, without thinking it through and, and, and planning it and, and all this other stuff. Um, so just as a practical example of what we're all doing here and what Buddhists have been doing for thousands of years uh, is based on a kind of thinking. Um, it's it's really just a matter of doing too too much. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I can't speak for Galileo and Einstein and all of that, but it seems like, uh, in my own experience, the best sort of things I've ever come up with didn't really involve much thought. And it's kind of weird. The things just sort of go wham, you know, I'm <laughs> just sort of there. Um, and I think, you know, when I've read about, uh, you know, geniuses, I keep thinking, real men of genius, you guys say. <laughs> You've heard those commercials? Okay. Anyway, it's, it's beer commercial, but so on. Um, <laughs> talking about real men of genius. But when I think of, of people who are um, of geniuses, a lot of them will say the same thing that, that it didn't, it wasn't really a matter of, of thinking. It just sort of, it just sort of appears there. Um, and there's, you don't want to um, completely get rid of the use of, of of your brain because you just become a, a vegetable, and there's no point in that. That's not that's not what um, the practice is about. Um, it's, it's an overuse, I think. We, we kind of, um, use thought to the point where it's, where it's valuable and good, and then because it's kind of enjoyable or something, uh, we're just, you know, going, going much further than, than actually, uh, needs to be, and getting, getting extremely confused about it. So I wouldn't say, you have to get rid of thought or, or learning or any kind of intellectual um, pursuit. Um, but it's kind of difficult to define clearly 